Hi students, in the last video we have finished parabola. Now we are going to study another conic section called an ellipse. We already know what an ellipse is. It is simply a conic section with an eccentricity less than 1. This is going to be our analytic definition to study an ellipse. Okay? Let us have a look at the definition. Here is the definition for an ellipse. A conic with an eccentricity e less than 1 is called an ellipse. That is, locus of point which moves in a plane such that distance from a fixed point and a fixed line should be in a constant ratio that is less than 1. Okay, here the fixed point is called the focus and the fixed line is called directrix and the constant ratio is called eccentricity b denoted by e. So in this case that e should be less than 1. Okay. Fine. Now, to study this curve and ellipse, we are going to pick simplest possible equation for an ellipse, something called standard form equation of an ellipse. Now, let us derive standard form equation of an ellipse. Okay. Standard equation of an ellipse. To come up with this standard equation of an ellipse, we need to start with a very particular type of directrix and focus. Eccentricity could be anything in the open interval 0 and 1. Unlike in the parabola case, here we are starting with the three things focus, directrix, and eccentricity. In the parabola case, we did not worry much about eccentricity because for parabola, eccentricity is fixed to 1. But for an ellipse, eccentricity could be anything in the open interval 0 and 1. That's why we have to start with the three things focus, directrix and eccentricity because these are the things involved in our analytic definition of an ellipse, right? Okay. Let S be the focus, L be the directrix and E be the eccentricity. Here our choice of directrix is this vertical line and our focus is located left side of the directrix like this, okay? Okay. Now let us take axis of the conic which is a line passing through the focus and perpendicular to the directrix which is meeting this directrix at z okay now let us take two special points on this axis let a a dash be points which divide s z in the ratio e to 1 internally and externally respectively here a is a point on this axis which divide this s z internally e to 1 ratio a dash is a point on this axis which divide S z externally e to 1 ratio. What is the meaning of that? S a by A z equal to e and also S a dash by A dash z equal to e. Okay. So by definition of an ellipse, we can see that these two points A a dash on this axis also points on an ellipse. Right? That's why our ellipse must be something like this. Okay? Fine. Now let us take the midpoint of this A A dash as a C also as an origin. Okay? Let us take our midpoint of this A A dash C. Let us take as an origin. Okay? So if this C is origin, then this axis which is a horizontal line passing through origin means it must be X axis. So our axis also x axis and the vertical line passing through 0 0 going to be y axis fine. Now here we have a C A equal to C A dash right because C is the midpoint of A A dash. So let us take C A equal to C A dash equal to small a okay. Then in terms of the small a the coordinates of A A dash must be like this. Here a coordinate is going to be a comma 0 because c a distance is a right and c is the origin. So that's why a coordinates must be a comma 0 and a dash coordinates must be minus a comma 0. Okay, fine. We have s a equal to e times a z. From here we can see that s a equal to e times a z. From here we can see that s a equal to e times a z. From here, we can see that S A dash equal to E times A dash Z. Okay. 
fine now this sca i can see as ca minus cs and this az i can see as cz minus ca okay let me write down this sca i am replacing with ca minus cs right this sca i am replacing with this ca minus cs because that's what sca and this az i am replacing with az is this right this az i am writing as cz minus ca okay so this sa same as ca minus cs this az same as cz minus ca okay now if i replace ca with a small a then we have this relation a minus cs equal to e times cz minus a okay let me call it 1 and from this one sa dash equal to e times a dash z s a dash we can see as cs plus c a dash right that's why this s a dash here left hand side i'm replacing with cs plus c a dash that is s a dash now right hand side a dash z i'm replacing with a dash z I'm writing as C A dash plus C Z. A dash Z I'm writing as C A dash plus C Z. Okay, so that's why the left hand said S C A dash I'm writing as C S plus C A dash. Right hand said E times A dash Z. This A dash Z I'm replacing with C A dash plus C Z. Again, the C dash equal to small a, right? Let me replace C A dash in both sides using small a. Then we have this relation. Okay. Let me call it 2. If I do 1 plus 2, what happens you see? If I do 1 plus 2, if I add these two, what happens here? The left hand side C S C S get cancelled. We have a 2A left hand side. Right hand side, what get cancelled? E A E A get cancelled, then we have 2 times E times C Z. Again, here is 2 to cancel, then we will have C Z equal to A by E. Okay, if I do 1 plus 2, then I will end up with C Z equal to A by E. So, this Z coordinate must be A by E, comma 0, and this vertical line must be X equal to A by E. Okay, now we got the equation for this vertical line x equal to a by e. If z coordinate going to be a by e comma 0 because cz, this distance cz what we got a by e. That's, for, that's how we got the z coordinates a by e comma 0 and this is a vertical line passing through a by e comma 0 whose equation is x equal to a by e. Fine. Now if I do 1 minus 2, what happened here? A minus Cs minus of Cs plus A equal to E times Cz minus A minus A minus Cz. Okay. Here this Cz, Cz cancel. Here A get cancelled. Then you will have minus 2 Cs equal to minus 2ae here 2 to cancel minus minus gone then we got the cs equal to a okay 1 minus 2 will give you cs equal to a so distance from the c2 focus is a means s coordinates must be a comma 0 okay so we got this s coordinates as a comma 0 now we got the equation of the directrix and also coordinates of this focus. So now we are in a position to apply analytic definition of an ellipse. Okay. Okay. Let P x1 y be any point on ellipse. Okay. Here is a point x1 y1 we have taken. By definition, SP should be equal to E times PM. If P is a point on an ellipse, 
then we must have sp equal to epm what is sp distance from this focus to this p pm is length of the perpendicular from this point x1 y1 to this directrix right okay so we can easily see this sp and pm sp going to be distance between these two points so sp we can write under root x1 minus ae whole square plus y1 minus 0 whole square e times pm length of the perpendicular from this x1 y1 to this line x minus a by e equal to 0. So what will be that mod x1 minus a by e by under root 1 square plus 0 square which is nothing but e times mod x1 minus a by e. So if you take a square both sides then the left hand side obviously x1 minus a e whole square plus y1 square the right hand side is going to be what and the right hand side e square and x1 minus a by e whole square going to be what x1 square plus a square by e square minus 2a x1 by e that's fine okay now so if i simplify both side okay here x1 minus a e whole square i can write x1 square plus a square e square minus 2 a e x1 plus y1 square and if i take e square inside we have e square x1 square plus a square minus 2 a x1 e okay here you can see that these two get cancelled fine now the leftover thing we can write here e square x1 square you can bring left side a square e square if you take right side then we will have this okay so x1 square minus e square x1 square i can write x1 square times 1 minus e square plus y1 square and this a square e square we are taking right side so we have a square minus a square e square that will be a square times 1 minus e square okay so if i divide both side by a square times 1 minus e square we will have this okay now we can choose a positive real number b such that a square times 1 minus e square equal to b square so let us choose pause to b so that b square equal to this a square times 1 minus e square okay fine then we can write down this one as x1 square by a square plus y1 square by b square equal to 1 so therefore the locus of p is going to be what x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 here 0 less than b less than a here the relation between a b and e is this okay what what we know actually 0 less than e less than 1 right that implies we can also say 0 less than 1 minus e square less than 1 so that's why we can say that this a square is bigger than b square that implies a is bigger than b okay so if this is the relation if this is the if this is the relation between a b and e then we must have b less than a as we know eccentricity is less than 1 okay so the locus of p we got x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 here 0 less than b less than a so this is the standard equation of an ellipse okay therefore here the locus of p we got x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 okay here b less than a this is the one standard equation of an ellipse fine okay here you can see that in this second degree equation in each term the degree of x and degree of y is even so that means this curve is going to be symmetric with respect to x axis and y axis so if you consider this image of this L directrix L with respect to y axis and image of this focus with respect to y axis 
then we end up with uh, this line L dash which is uh, x equal to minus a by e and s dash which is the image of this focus s yes, with respect to y axis whose coordinates going to be minus a e comma 0 okay if you had started with uh, this directrix and this focus still you would have ended up with the same ellipse okay so that's why for an ellipse we have a two focus we call 4c that is the plural name for the focus okay we have a two focus s s dash s coordinates are a e comma 0 s dash coordinates are minus a e comma 0 and two directrices one directrix equation is x equal to a by e another directrix equation is x equal to minus a by e fine okay okay now let us see nature of the curve okay okay now let us see nature of the curve standard ellipse for the standard ellipse axis of the conic same as this x axis which means the ellipse at two points a a dash this a a dash are going to be vertices here because intersection points of axis and conic are called vertices because we define vertices as intersection points of conic and axis right fine that's why we call this a a dash are called vertices unlike a parabola here we got a two vertices parabola got only one vertex here ellipse got two vertices fine whose coordinates are a comma 0 minus a comma 0 okay here the midpoint of a a dash c will be a center for an ellipse when we talk about parabola center did not make sense for a parabola but for an ellipse the c will be a center what is the meaning of center any chord through c c should bisect it right if you take any chord through c c will bisect it okay that's why c will be a center fine okay here this y axis meets the standard ellipse at two points b b dash whose coordinates are going to be here b coordinates are going to be 0 comma b b dash coordinates are going to be 0 comma minus b here what is the standard ellipse equation x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 okay when you solve for this b b dash what you do you simply plug in x equal to 0 0 square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 okay that implies y equal to plus or minus b you get right that's why the b coordinates going to be 0 comma b b dash coordinates going to be 0 comma minus b okay fine one more thing unlike a parabola this is a bounded curve okay we have a curve for only x between minus a to a so we have only for mod x less than or equal to a we have a curve for only mod x less than or equal to a and the corresponding y values also only between minus b to b so and the corresponding y values ranges from minus b to b so we have mod y less than or equal to b okay for any point x y on the ellipse okay so we have mod x less than or equal to a mod y less than or equal to b that means we can say that this ellipse is bounded between two vertical lines x equal to minus a and x equal to a and two horizontal lines y equal to minus b and y equal to b okay next length of this a a dash segment going to be 2a length of this b b dash segment going to be 2b here the line segment a a dash b b dash of length 2a 2b respectively are called axis of an ellipse okay in this case this a a dash is called major axis b b dash is called minor axis okay here we have a greater than b right okay so if a greater than b this a a dash is called major axis b b dash is called minor axis vice versa if a less than b see when a greater than b you get fat and short ellipse 
but when a less than b you get a tall and skinny ellipse like this in that case axis will be y axis the force here also lies on y axis okay in that case so the b b dash is going to be major axis a a dash is going to be minor axis okay we know what is the double ordinate right double ordinate is a chord which is perpendicular to axis of the conic if i take this chord which is perpendicular to axis of the conic okay so let's say this is through x okay then if i say end points are d d dash okay so what will be this end points d coordinates will be equal to x comma b by a under root a square minus x square and d dash coordinates will be equal to x comma minus b by a under root a square minus x square because you know so from this you can write y equal to plus or minus b by a under root a square minus x square okay that's why if x coordinate is x then y coordinate must be plus or minus b by a under root a square minus x square here d dash is simply going to be mirror image of d with respect to x axis okay in particular if you are interested in lattice spectrum what is the lattice spectrum double ordinate through focus okay that means here x is going to be equal to a e okay so this is a double ordinate through s okay so what will be the end points here if x equal to a e let's see what are the end points here okay a e comma b by a under root a square i'm taking x equal to a e so a square e square so a e comma b by a if i get a out i write under root 1 minus e square okay now this a cancel i can write a e comma b times under root 1 minus e square but we know relationship between b a e what is that b square equal to 1 minus e square times a square so that implies 1 minus e square i can write b square by a square that implies under root 1 minus e square will be equal to b by a okay so this is going to be what a e comma b times b by a so a e comma b square by a so one end point going to be a e comma b square by a other will be mirror image of this that is simply going to be a e comma minus b square by a so here ends of this lattice rectum going to be l1 a e comma b square by a l1 dash other end going to be mirror image of it which is going to be a e comma minus b square by a okay so l1 coordinates are what a e comma b square by a l1 dash coordinates are a e comma minus b square by a similarly there is another lattice rectum through other focus okay so through s dash also we have another lattice rectum whose end points are going to be simply minus a e comma b square by a okay minus a e comma minus b square by a okay and the length of this lattice rectum is going to be 2 b square by a because this length is going to be b square by a this length also going to be b square by a so total going to be 2 b square by a same here okay so if a greater than b the length of the lattice rectum will be 2 b square by a okay if a less than b the answer will be if a less than b then the length of the lattice rectum will be 2 a square by b because when a less than b the relation we will have between a e b will be this okay a square equal to 1 minus e square times b square okay so you will use that relation okay so when a less than b that means for for tall and skinny ellipse like this okay 
So the length of the lateral spectrum is going to be 2a square by b. For a greater than b here, we have a 2b square by a. Please keep in mind these things. Okay. Okay. Let us compare standard equation of an ellipse when a greater than b and a less than b. When a greater than b, we have this short and fat ellipse. When a less than b, we have this tall and skinny ellipse. Let's compare these two for following things. Okay. Okay. Let's answer all these things for standard ellipse when a greater than b. First of all, center which is a 0, 0. Okay. Next, vertices. What are vertices here? A, A dash. A coordinates are A comma 0. A dash coordinates are minus A comma 0. So the vertices we can write plus or minus A comma 0. Okay. Length of the major axis. Here A, A dash is going to be major axis whose length we already know that is 2A. Length of the minor axis. B, B dash is going to be minor axis. Okay. Whose length will be 2B. Okay. Next, 4C. Okay. What are focus coordinates here? One focus is A, E comma 0. Another one is minus A, E comma 0. So, 4C coordinates are going to be plus or minus A, E comma 0. Okay. Equation of directrices. Okay. One directrix here. Vertical line x equal to a by e, another one is x equal to minus a by e. Okay, so therefore I can write these equations as x equal to plus or minus a by e. Fine. And relation in a, b, and e. In this case, we have seen that relation is b square equal to a square times 1 minus e square. Okay, so if you want to write down e equal to you can write under root 1 minus b square by a square okay this is how you can get eccentricity in terms of a and b okay and length of the lattice rectum we have already seen that length of the lattice rectum is 2b square by a okay and ends of lattice rectum that also we have seen there are two lattice rectum here we got two lattice rectum, one is through S, other one is through S dash, okay. Here L1, L1 dash, let's say L2, L2 dash, okay. L1 coordinates going to be A, E comma B square by A, L1 dash going to be A, E comma minus B square by A, L2 coordinates going to be minus A, E comma B square by A, L2 dash coordinates going to be minus a comma minus b square by a we have already seen it okay next focal distances of a point x1 y1 okay you can also call them focal ready okay here the focal distances of the point x1 y1 going to be there are two focus right so for each point x1 y1 on ellipse you can talk about sp s dash p sp is one focal distance S dash P will be another focal distance. Okay. If you take any point P X1 Y1 on the ellipse, okay, this S P is one focal distance. And that should be same as if you take the length of the perpendicular to this directrix. Okay, let's say it meet at M. So S P should be same as E times P M by definition. PM is what? Length of the perpendicular from point x1, y1 to this directrix. So it should be E times PM is what? Uh, mod x1 minus A by E. Okay. So if I take E inside, I will have E x1 minus A. Okay. But you should know one thing. For any point x1, y1 on ellipse, we should have mod x1 less than or equal to a okay because here we have a this ellipse only from minus a to a so and also e is something between 0 and 1 that's why e x1 should be still less than or equal to a so if you want to get rid of this modulus so you should write a minus e x1 okay similarly s dash p okay if you look at s dash p 
this should be same as e times let's say this one m dash okay s dash p should be equal to e times p m dash okay so s dash p e times perpendicular distance from this p to this directrix okay similarly if you do it you will get s dash p equal to a plus e x1 okay that's why the focal distances of the point x1 y1 s p going to be a minus e x1 s dash p going to be a plus e x1 okay sum of the focal distances of the point x1 y1 but if you add these two what happen e x1 e x1 get cancel you will get 2a okay so the sum of the focal distances always equal to 2a independent of x1 y1 whatever point you take okay so this sp plus s dash p always equal to 2a okay so one can also define ellipse as in terms of this property sp plus s dash p equal to 2a okay fine you will see that next let us look at all these things when a less than b case when a less than b we got this tall and skinny ellipse okay here this one fine of course center again 0 0 but this time vertices are going to be b b dash so the coordinates going to be 0 comma plus or minus b and length of the major axis is going to be 2b okay this one right b b dash length length of the minor axis this time a a dash going to be minor axis so the length of the minor axis is going to be 2a and 4c okay here s s dash they lie on this y axis here for this the force is going to be 0 comma plus or minus b s is going to be 0 comma b s dash is 0 comma minus b and equation of the directrices here two directrices are horizontal lines y equal to minus b by e1 y equal to b by e1 so the equations of directrices you can write y equal to plus or minus b by a okay so for in this case the relation in a b and e going to be this a square equal to b square times 1 minus e square in this case if you want to find eccentricity in terms of a and b the formula will be this e equal to under root 1 minus a square by b square if a greater than b the formula is this okay e equal to under root 1 minus b square by a square okay fine next length of the lattice rectum it's going to be 2a square by b okay similarly you can work out ends of the lattice rectum is going to be this plus or minus a square by b plus or minus b okay so just feel free to verify similarly okay for this tall and skinny ellipse the ends of the lattice rectum what are lattice rectum here through s yes. this is a one this is a one okay these end points are going to be this plus or minus a square by b comma plus or minus b there are four coordinates are there okay for each choice of plus minus okay total there will be four similarly the focal distances of the point x1 y1 in this case sp going to be equal to b minus e1 s dash p going to be b plus e1 okay so again the sum of the focal distances going to be this time is going to be 2b so in both cases sum of the focal distances equal to length of the major axis right okay okay now let us look at the equation of an ellipse whose axis parallel to coordinate axis and center is at h comma k okay fine first let us look at the standard ellipse okay whose equation is x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 right okay now whose center is at 0 0 okay and axis is x axis okay the ends of the major axis 
the vertices a is a comma 0 a dash is minus a comma 0 ends of the minor axis b 0 comma b b dash 0 comma minus b and 4c s a e comma 0 s dash minus a e comma 0 and directrices this one is x equal to a by e x equal to minus a by e. we know these things now if we shift the center 0 0 to this location h comma k okay see then the transformed equation of this ellipse will be x minus h whole square by a square plus y minus k whole square by b square equal to 1 okay this is the transformed equation of this one now you see this is the ellipse equation whose center is at h comma k okay and whose axis is this horizontal line whose equation will be y equal to k okay fine now here here see everything got transformed here here the center 0 0 transform to h comma k this focus a comma 0 transform to h plus a comma k and this vertex a transform to h plus a comma k this vertex b transform to h comma k plus b okay and this directrix x equal to a by e transform to this x equal to h plus a by e okay so we can see all these things fine we just looked at the transformed equation of standard fatty ellipse when the center 0 0 to shifted to the location h comma k right similarly you can also look at the transformed equation of standard skinny ellipse okay when the center 0 0 shifted to the location h comma k in the next slide i will compare these two things okay okay now let us compare equation of an ellipse with a center h comma k and axis parallel to coordinate axis when a greater than b and a less than b okay fine okay so this is a standard ellipse this is a shifted ellipse when center 0 0 gets shifted to h comma k this is a case when a greater than b this is a standard ellipse when a less than b okay this is shifted ellipse here the center 0 0 gets shifted to this location h comma k okay fine let's answer following things for each type first of all center as you can see h comma k for the type 1 a greater than b type vertices here vertices of the standard ellipse are plus or minus a comma 0 right so these vertices get shifted to h plus or minus a comma k okay and length of the major axis so this major axis is going to be same because this length this length will be same right the length of the major axis still will be 2a and length of the minor axis okay that will be 2b because this length this length will be same okay your shape is not changing so these lengths will be preserved and the 4c okay the standard ellipse 4c is plus or minus a e comma 0 so it gets shifted to h plus or minus a e comma k and equation of the directrices okay so x equal to plus or minus a by e the transformed equations will be x equal to h plus or minus a by e and the relation in a b e will be same okay and length of the lattice rectum also will be 2b square by a okay so these things are same as for standard ellipse the ends of the lattice rectum we already know what are ends of the lattice rectum for standard ellipse that are plus or minus a e comma plus or minus b square by a so they get translated to h plus r minus a e comma k plus r minus b square by a similarly the focal distances of a point x1 y1 if you take a point p x1 y1 here okay so here let us say s dash here is s okay 
this s p and s dash p just like we did earlier you can get it you know s p going to be a plus e times x1 minus h s dash p going to be a minus of e times x1 minus h okay again the sum of the focal distances of the point x1 y1 going to be again 2a because if you add these two up you know what happens you see so the e times x1 minus h e times x1 minus h cancel so we have 2a okay in the same way when a less than b type okay so for this okay so center is again going to be h comma k the vertices here see the original vertices are what here b b b dash right they are 0 comma plus or minus b they get shifted to h comma k plus or minus b okay length of the major axis again same it is same as the standard ellipse for a less than b so it's going to be 2b and length of the minor axis again this is same as this one so it is 2a okay the 4c for standard ellipse when a less than b the 4c going to be 0 comma plus or minus b so for the shifted ellipse the 4c going to be h comma k plus or minus b okay next equation of the directrices for standard ellipse when a less than b equation of the directrices are y equal to plus or minus b by a okay so the translated directrices equation will be y equal to k plus or minus b by a and the relation in a b e will be same as the standard one that is going to be a square equal to b square times 1 minus e square and the length of the lattice rectum will be same 2a square by b because you know this length will not change right same okay and ends of the lattice rectum okay so for standard ellipse when a less than b the ends of the lattice rectum are plus or minus a square by b comma plus or minus b okay so they get translated to this one h plus or minus a square by b comma k plus or minus b okay and the focal distances of the point x1 y1 sp going to be equal to b plus e times y1 minus k s dash p equal to b minus e times y1 minus k again the sum of the focal distances here it's going to be 2b okay we have seen a special property of an ellipse that is sum of the focal distances of any point on ellipse is always constant in fact we can define ellipse using this property okay let's do that definition ellipse a locus of points which moves in a plane such that sum of whose distances from two fixed points in the plane is constant. Here, yes, s dash are two fixed points. P moves in a plane such that s p plus s dash p is always constant. Here, s p plus s dash p equal to constant. Okay, then that locus will be a ellipse fine here the two fixed points are called 4c okay two focus focus one focus two the plural word for focus is 4c right so the two fixed points are going to be 4c fine let us watch the animation for tracing out ellipse using a word definition Now let us see axillary circle of an ellipse. Here is the definition. The circle described on the major axis of an ellipse as a diameter is called axillary circle of the ellipse. Okay, let's say here is our ellipse. Okay, this orange one is our ellipse with a C center. Okay. Here, endpoints of the major axis A, A dash, 
end points of the minor axis b b dash okay so now here a a dash is the major axis now if i draw a circle taking this a a dash as a diameter so it look like this this is a circle with a diameter a a dash okay if you have started with a standard equation of an ellipse like x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 where a greater than b okay then so this length is going to be equal to 2a right so this radius of the circle is going to be a so what will be the equation of this circle it's going to be x square plus y square equal to a square okay because center is going to be 0 0 so this auxiliary circle equation is going to be x square plus y square equal to a square okay so the equation of the auxiliary circle of an ellipse x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 when a greater than b is x square plus y square equal to a square fine okay okay now we are going to see eccentric angle of a point on an ellipse then we look at parametric equation for standard ellipse okay fine this is a standard ellipse this one is its axillary circle okay if you take any point on this ellipse okay p x y is a point on ellipse okay if i draw perpendicular onto its axis it meets at n pn if i extend pn so that it meets its axillary circle at q okay this is q then cq makes at an angle with this ca okay let us say this angle acq is theta okay so in terms of this theta this q coordinates must be equal to a cos theta comma a sin theta okay so x coordinate must be a cos theta y coordinate must be a sin theta because we know the parametric equation for this circle the circle is what x square plus y square equal to a square so the parametric equation for that circle will be x equal to a cos theta y equal to a sin theta where theta vary from 0 to 2 pi okay that's why we can say that this q must be in this form a cos theta a sin theta okay here this angle angle acq is called eccentric angle of this point p okay this angle theta is called eccentric angle of this point p okay and also this qn is a vertical segment so any point on the segment must have same x coordinates so in particular this x also should be equal to a cos theta therefore we can see that here x must be equal to a cos theta question is what about y okay here we understand now this is a cos theta question is what is y we also know that this is a point on ellipse what is ellipse here ellipse equation x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 a greater than b case okay since a cos theta comma y is point on ellipse if i substitute in this equation it must satisfy so and here p lies on ellipse x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 so when i substitute this a cos theta comma y here so what we have a square cos square theta by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 now so what happened here so a square a square cancel so y square by b square equal to 1 minus cos square theta that implies y square equal to b square 1 minus cos square theta we can write sin square theta so y will be equal to plus r minus b sin theta okay okay but minus b sin theta will be y coordinate of the mirror image of this p that is p dash okay okay for that eccentric angle is going to be minus theta okay so here we go ahead with a 
b sin theta for y for our point you go ahead with a b sin theta okay so that's why here the point p is of the form a cos theta comma b sin theta okay okay here we use the notation p of theta is a point on ellipse means we mean a cos theta comma b sin theta okay this is our notation for p of theta we say p of theta is a point on ellipse x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 means we mean this point a cos theta b sin theta okay so we can see that any point on ellipse x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 is of the form a cos theta comma b sin theta. So that's why now we can write down the parametric equation for the standard ellipse x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 is going to be this x equal to a cos theta y equal to b sin theta here theta varies from 0 to 2 pi okay. So these are going to be parametric equation for ellipse equation x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 fine okay position of point in the plane with respect to ellipse first of all a ellipse divides plane into two disjoint parts the one containing force is called interior of ellipse okay and other is called exterior of the ellipse. Question is given an ellipse and a point in the plane, is there a way to decide whether the point inside ellipse or outside ellipse? Answer is yes, we can do that. So first let me introduce some notation. Okay. So here in future results, I am going to use some notation where S denote the expression x square by a square plus y square by b square minus 1 and S1 denote the expression x x1 by a square plus y y1 by b square minus 1. S11 denote the expression x1 square by a square plus y1 square by b square minus 1. And S12 denotes the expression x1 x2 by a square plus y1 y2 by b square minus 1. Okay, fine. If we consider the ellipse x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1, here a greater than b in the point x1 y1 in the plane, then we could have one of the following three situations. This point x1 y1 could be exterior to the ellipse or this point x1 y1 could be interior to the ellipse this point x1 y1 could be on the ellipse right okay in the first case see the point x1 y1 exterior to the ellipse in this case if i draw perpendicular onto its axis it meets at a point m okay so whose coordinates going to be x1 comma 0 also it cut the ellipse at a point q okay whose x coordinate will be x1 here pm is a vertical segment right every point on pm should have a same x coordinate right now then the y coordinate of q is going to be b by a under root a square minus x1 square because you know from this you should know y square by b square equal to 1 minus x square by a square okay then y square equal to b square by a square times a square minus x square that implies y equal to plus or minus b by a times under root a square minus x square that's why if you know x coordinate as x1 then y coordinate must be b by a under root a square minus x1 square okay fine in this case it's pretty clear that pm is bigger than qm this is a pm this is qm okay fine next case 
in this case our point x1 y1 interior to the ellipse okay again if i draw perpendicular onto its axis it meets at a point m also if i extend the pm so that it meets ellipse at a q okay so again the q coordinate is going to be x1 comma b by a under root a square minus x1 square okay fine in this case you can see that this is a pm this is a qm so here pm is less than qm okay next in this case the point x1 y1 on the ellipse okay again if i draw perpendicular onto its axis it meets at a point m whose coordinates going to be x1 comma 0 and the pm cuts this ellipse at a point q and this pm meets the ellipse at a point q but in this case the q p itself right okay so so again here pm is same as qm in this case we have a pm equal to qm okay fine so here first of all the pm is actually what here y1 the qm is going to be in all these cases the pm equal to y1 qm equal to b by a under root a square minus x1 square okay fine so from the above graphs we can observe the following things The first one, if P lies exterior of the ellipse, if and only if PM greater than QM, if and only if, what is PM Y1? Y1 greater than B by A under root A square minus X1 square. This is equivalent to, if you take a square both sides, you will have this Y1 square greater than B square by A square times A square minus X1 square. This one actually you can write you know y1 square by b square greater than 1 minus x1 square by a square okay this we can rewrite if I write one side x1 square by a square plus y1 square by b square minus 1 greater than 0 that is equivalent to saying that s11 positive. So, if and only if S11 positive. So, P lies exterior of the ellipse if and only if S11 positive. Just like the way we used to check for circle and parabola. So, simply you have to look at S11. If it is positive, then the P lies exterior of the ellipse. Similarly, P lies interior of the ellipse if and only if pm less than qm okay what is pm again y1 less than what is qm b by a under root a square minus x1 square so if you simply square each side you will have this y1 square less than b square by a square times a square minus x1 square so this will be equivalent to saying that s11 negative okay so P lies interior of the ellipse if and only if S11 negative. Next, P lies on the ellipse if and only if PM equal to QM. What is PM here? PM here Y1, QM equal to B by under root A square minus X1 square. If you take a square both side, you will end up with this. And this will be equivalent to saying that S11 equal to 0. So if and only if s11 equal to 0 therefore p lies on the ellipse if and only if s11 equal to 0 this is how we can easily check whether a point inside the ellipse or outside the ellipse are on the ellipse okay fine let me stop now thank you